Ah, oh, well, good afternoon. Everybody, and I have actually uh, discussed the general topic in the past, but I thought I'd bring things together, as it were, a bit with some ideas uh, on a 15-day uh, uh, Amtrak uh, USA Rail Pass and just uh, hone in on a few of the uh, concepts. We've done a few things, so we went away in 2014 and did it, but some of the areas involve, say for example, visiting, let's say, the Grand Canyon. And we've made this similar mistake to a lot of people, just get on the train at LA, go to Flagstaff, you arrive early in the morning, you've got to get yourself, uh, your bags into the hotel, you've got to go down and get the bus at 7.30 or so in the morning and off you go to the Grand Canyon. Well, there's actually, and you come back later in the afternoon, the next day you get the train. Now, it's actually a better way to approach that is to come in from the Chicago area, I'm saying you may come in from other places, but you come in through Albuquerque and you come into Flagstaff at 8, or I think it's 8.55 in the evening, you stay overnight, next morning you get the bus up to the Grand Canyon. Have a look around there and there's a train goes out of there at 3.30 in the afternoon. It's a couple of hours run down to uh, Williams. You then uh, can take a, a 10 minute taxi or a bus trip later after dinner. You can get the train uh, out the uh, California Zephyr out of uh, Williams Junction and go to LA. Now giving you a basic uh, 15 day um, trip bring, bring having in mind a couple of things in uh, the Amtrak passes are more restrictive than the Brit Rail Pass which is unlimited or even a U Rail Pass which is which is fairly well unlimited but you do require various booking fees and things like that so we're only talking about the Amtrak one now talking from a perspective of about uh, on this trip a couple of things. Um, from the Australian perspective, you would go to a good travel agent, and we've used the student flights uh, uh, travel agents. They get in the pass, you then book all the segments, everything you wanted to do, you book, you pay for the pass, you take it to the starting point, and then you exchange that for the actual pass, and you get all the bookings, and they go through it with you, and you get it right and you're done. It's very important that in summer, which is this time of year over in America, that you book two to three months in advance and you look for a roomette, which is a small cabin for one or two passengers, and you book all that on long distance trains as required. A quick rundown would be on this from an Australian perspective, you might fly to Dallas as a non stop flight from Sydney to Dallas. And I'm interested in things like the Kennedy assassination. I'd like to look at the grassy knoll. I'd like to look at the book depository and all that type of thing. Well, you have a couple of nights in Dallas. Now, you start, I won't go day by day by day, but let me assure you I have, and it does fit within the 15 days. It's very, very important that Amtrak has what they call eight sectors. Now, a sector does not include changing trains, for example, but does include an overnight stay. You've done a sector once you do that. So I'll give you a quick idea. You take the Texas Eagle out of Dallas and you go to Chicago, and I suggest you change trains in Chicago, and in my case I've got a number of friends I've known for many years in some cases. I see them at Union Station quite literally, which I've done in the past. And you travel to Milwaukee. When you get off in Milwaukee and you're staying overnight, that is one sector. Now, the next day, if you take the Empire Builder and you go to the West Glacier, now there's two stops, West Glacier and East Glacier, and you can check on this and look up online the Red Bus Tours. They no longer stop at Essex, Montana, where I, Lottie and I did in 2014, and we were blessed by meeting up with another American rail fan and his daughter who, uh, who had a hire car and were able to do the tour, uh, otherwise would have missed out on it completely. So the red buses go from the uh, Amtrak station, there's, there's lodges there, 
you do the tour. Now, then you would go, uh, I'm only suggesting all of this as a, an idea, right? You'd go from there to Portland, Oregon, stay over and you go down to uh, Sacramento. Now, some of this is quite important. You note all this down as you go. Now, that's on the coast starlight. And you go on the, on, on the California Zephyr around to Galesburg, Illinois, where you would arrive at 11.30 or so in the morning. And I have a general rule. Never book an Amtrak connection of under six hours. Around 5.30 in the evening, is uh, the Southwest Chief would go from Galesburg. And you go down, as I say, overnight, and you continue on through... Uh, through Albuquerque and you get to uh, Flagstaff and you do the trip I was saying to the Grand Canyon and then into LA, you have a couple of uh, nights in LA and you take the train up to San Francisco where you would have completed your 15 days and 8 segment trip. It is without doubt the most scenic and enjoyable train trip that I can come up with and I've done a few value for money uh, and you always get a uh, room at uh, sleeping berths for yourself if you're single they'll give you a cabin as our daughter is going to do in august this year she's going to go from uh, san francisco well really it's emeryville to denver and she'll get a cabin to herself at a very reasonable price she paid 375 dollars for a, a sleeper and all meals versus 175 for coach as they call it for sitting up car and then you've got to pay for all your meals so you get a very very good value out of uh, paying for a roomette so that is the basic information I give for what I consider one of the best 15 day uh, Amtrak uh, USA rail pass um, vacations note as I said again please a sector involves an overnight stay, does not involve changing trains. A sector might be short, might, such as, as I was describing, Williams Junction to LA. If you're staying overnight in LA, which you would, that is one sector gone. And of course, another sector would be LA across to, uh, I would suggest San Jose, and then you could go into San Francisco and spend a night or two. You finish your pass, you go in and have a look at the transport systems. If you're a train enthusiast or transit enthusiast as I am, you'd look at BART, you'd look at Muni, you'd uh, do all this sort of stuff. But if you're not, you do the tours to the Redwoods or you might do the Alcatraz tour and what have you, and then you fly home. Now, this, these, this discussion is aimed at, that's for overseas people like Australians, but if you're coming from Britain or you're coming from Ireland, it's very important to note the Irish flight every day from Dublin to Chicago is you clear customs, the US customs in Dublin. It's unique in the world. You then get off the plane in Chicago as if you're on a domestic flight and away you go. So you can start your trip out of there. And if you happen to be uh, on the east coast of the United States, you say, oh, well, I could start out of uh, Boston or I could start out of New York or Philadelphia or Washington. That is still day one out of there and still fits in via Chicago and as I said, Milwaukee I'm, I'm uh, selecting as a, a suitable overnight stay. So anyway, I always welcome any, um, you know, polite and, and, and civil comments and, and questions and, uh, and uh, uh, suggestions. I have uh, experienced this a number of times. Uh, and as I said, you can approach places like Glacier National Park from the wrong direction, which we did. We went to from Seattle across to um, uh, Essex, Montana, get there early in the morning. Have to get up early in the morning to go on towards the east. We went as far as uh, uh, St. Paul. It's better to approach it from the opposite direction as it's better to approach the Grand Canyon from the east. As I say, these are a couple of travel tips that I'd leave everybody with. Uh, and uh, I'd like to uh, hear from people who are interested in these sorts of things. And I, I would like to thank you for viewing.